do, and I appreciate you coming. Let me tell you this before I go away from you. Pharaoh was a hard man. But God changed his heart. Thank you, sir. And God can change you all heart to help the people in this city. This is your city. But my thing is, what do you think that the mayor was saying when he said crime is going to get worse? Something got to be done. And now I was told to, to uh, um, direct my question to you all. Can you give me an answer on that? I cannot give you an answer. I cannot speak for the mayor, sir, but I do appreciate you coming here. And I do appreciate what you have said and appreciate that you have said here so long to say it. And, uh, yeah, you know, I think I'm going to get to it too. To, you know, to ban nobody. Right. I, I you know, Madam President, may I ask him a question? Of course, Mr. Jones. Mr. Miller. Yes, sir. Um, sometimes the unsighted see more than the rest of us. My question is, uh, uh, what does it mean to you? His comments, that it's going to get worse. I would think the mayor would be telling everybody that it's going to get better. That was a baffling comment to me, and maybe you might have an answer. What does it mean to you? What it means to me? My opinion about it, I, I really do think that that Mayor Jones is, is, is trying to send a message to, to you all. In action, actually, I because, because something has to be done. Mr. Jones, Someone get a worker from the mayor's office is here. Ma Maybe you would like to talk to her. And she may be able to give you more insight. Madam President. But don't help me. Don't help me, so. Don't help me. Just help yeah. the people in the citizen of Richmond. That yes. if we could, if you all can sit down with RRHA and the mayor and get a plan and put these people to work, that will bring the, the economy will come up. I had a discussion with Jeff Paul about that. Okay. You got people out here that owe child support. Yes, sir. They will get the money. Sir. They will get the money. Yes, sir. And I, you know, I, I, I don't mean, agree with you, but you got them. I, I and respect you. Coming, but I, I respect you and I respect what you're saying, but I just got to do what I was told to do. And I hear you, sir. And I respect you. I'm on a mission to go down. I have to move when God tells me to move. Yeah. I don't move when Esau wants to move. I do not move when I want to move. But Mr. Miller, I have to move when, when God wants me to move. And the only thing I'm asking is to listen. You know? And I think Mr. Because, Miller, you know, you see this building? Give Mr. Miller. There's a need in this building. <laughs> Mr. Miller. And God Mr. Miller. is now. Mr. Miller, you have made your point, and I appreciate you coming down. I really appreciate you staying. So uh, other speech have a speech. We can, we can but work on it. But the rest of this conversation has to be offline because I'm sorry to say that your time is really up. So but thank you for coming. It's offline when you're talking about people's table. Uh, I'm you sure you can, you can call my office and talk to me. I'm sure you can call Mr. Jewell, Ms. Jamal. Anybody on this council, you call their office and they would be happy to have that conversation with you. But for right now, right here, your time is up. I'm sorry. Well, I'm with you. I'm not coming back. You know, because God doesn't want to come back. I understand that. See, I had moved. This Mr. Miller, I'm sorry, but you your time know, is really up. Hey, if y'all don't want to listen. Yes, let's do this. Don't be surprised. Yes, don't be surprised. And don't blame me. Okay. See, don't blame me. I'm not. Because I'm doing what God wants me to do. You know, don't blame me because if you go home tonight, Mr. Miller, or anybody on the city council go home tonight and find out that one of your loved ones, Mr. Or Miller, Mr. Or Mr. Miller, Mr. Miller, your time is up. How are you? Your time is up. You end. I ask you to please sit down. Here. You all be blessed, you have good And you be blessed also. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Madam President, the next speaker is Gloria Harris. The next speaker is Dalian Richardson.
Stoney Richardson, and the former Administrative Secretary of Attorney John L. Tilt III. As before, my former discrepancy was uh, in reference to the housing situation to help people who are homeless and living in poverty. Um, also, work for Governor Gilmore. I have a criminology and law and psychiatry research background. Uh, my last venture was to alleviate that discrepancy. Uh, a collaboration of efforts is now what I'm proposing to achieve the goal of arranging some type of housing that is an easy process to accumulate. Uh, it should not be difficult to make sure that people who are homeless obtain housing with all of the other buildings, <coughs> anchor structure workers and monies that are being set down on, but it's a decent view that does just not seem fair to people who are going to social services and thinking and getting told that they don't have any housing or needs. <coughs> Every state on the map has a social services department. And I've never, I've never heard of this before. Um, Collaborative effort is working together to achieve a goal. It is a recursive process where two or more people or organizations work together to share a common goal. This is the more uh, more than interaction of common goals, seeing adventures with deep collective determination to reach an eventual objective. A decentralized and egalitarian group, which means making having power concentrated in a single central authority, structured methods of collaboration, courage, retrospective behavior, and communication. The International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights is a multilateral, which means having many staff and points of view uh, involving more than one party. It convinces parties to work toward the granting of economic, social, and cultural rights, the ESCR to individuals including labor rights, the right to health, adequate standard of living. On July the 11th, the company had 160 parties in seven countries, including the USA, that signed, but not yet ratified the covenant. I will be contacting the Administrative Law Judge, the ALJ, and the Inspector General so they can be notified of the situation as soon as possible. Uh, for people who are seeking housing and have an immediate need, if HUD has determined that your state or local agency has the same fair housing powers as HUD, they will refer your complaint to that agency for investigation, notify you of the referral. The agency must begin to work on your complaint within 30 days or HUD may take it back. If you need immediate help to stop a serious problem that is being caused by Fair Housing Act or violation, HUD may be able to assist you as soon as you file a complaint. And it authorizes the Attorney General to go to court to seek temporary or preliminary relief pending the outcome of your complaint. If your case goes to an administrative hearing, HUD attorneys will litigate the case on your behalf. You may intervene in the case and be represented by your own attorney if you wish. And an administrative law judge will consider evidence from you and the respondent. You have 30 seconds. Please begin to summarize. Okay. If the ALA decides that discrimination occurred, the, the respondent can be ordered to compensate you for actual damages, including humiliation, pain, and suffering, to provide injunctive and equitable relief, for example, to make the housing available to you, and to pay the federal government a civil penalty to vindicate the public interest also for discrimination. The maximum penalties are sixteen thousand dollars for first year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Al Shirley Ami.
We come playing to the originally back to our board that consists of Cecilia Dabney, Ernesto Sampson, and George William Thomas. The Richmond Electoral Board never responded. We wrote to the Attorney General, Ken Cuccinelli, and the State Board of Elections, which is headed by Don Palmer, Kimberly Bowers, and Charles Judd, who are put in place to assure that elections are fair and correct, and who also are required to rectify any problems. They did not respond to our request. We wrote to JLAR, to the city auditor, the ACLU, the ACLJ, the state auditor, and to you, the Richmond City Council, which is composed of Bruce Tyler, Charles Samuels, Chris Hilbert, Kathy Graziano, Marty Jewell, Ellen Robertson, Cynthia Newbill, Reba Trammell, and Doug Connor. To my knowledge, none of you have done anything, even when some of you have knowledge that fraud was going on. Please know that your involvement in corruption or omission of information should lead to actions against you, as stated in the city charter. To paraphrase, any council member may be removed for malfeasance in office or for neglect of duty. The mayor may be removed following the procedure set forth in 24.2-233 of the Code of Virginia. Any of you convicted for crimes dealing with moral turpitude, any felony, or certain misdemeanors, if you know anything about fraud in these elections, you should speak up now. As a result of our investigations, we know that we do not have honest local elections in Virginia you know, and probably to summarize. throughout the state of Virginia. We also know that Mr. Jackson, your Richmond City Attorney, also notified that the Richmond Auditor, Nimesh DeLaw, that Mr. Law cannot investigate this matter. We also notified the FBI. We found that the State Board of Elections has no check and balance method to determine if the registrar's information is correct. That is why there were your problems up. with Thanks. the signatures for TGFs and Michael Ryan. Other signatures were simply not checked. The State Board of Elections has decided to relieve Jane Kirk Showalter and has not provided us with information that her information is correct. Okay. I, I know that, but I, you know, we sat here waiting for a long time. I, I know. And you guys went around and did your little thing twice. I appreciate that. You know, I but I only, have, I only have three more sentences. All right, here's your sentences. The attorney, the attorney General uses our tax dollars to uphold employees whether right or wrong. We simply asked for an investigation long before the election date, and that request was refused by not responding to us at all. The news media would not hear Thank you, that for sense. this our concerns. Okay. And we are have this court case in court, and we hope that you hear us. Thank you. I appreciate that. The next speaker is Kelvin Matthew. Good evening. My name is Kelvin Matthew, and I reside at um, 3613 Barmark um, Drive over on the south side, the 8th District, where um, Mrs. Trammell is the um, representative. I'm here today, I don't have anything written down, but I'm here to um, speak from the heart and to um, tell you my concern. Um, in the latter part of last year, um, there was a note left on my sister's door telling me that my vehicle was not in compliance with the code of, um, of Richmond. And it was from um, Mr. Um, Hanson Fields. And I immediately called Mr. Fields, um, asking him how to correct the situation. Um, of course, his voicemail came on, and I left a message, and um, he did not call me back. Um, I came home um, several weeks later to find my vehicle um, towed from the backyard. And again, I called Mr. Hanson Field and asked him um, what had happened to um, my vehicle because I had um, gotten the um, vehicle um, inspected 
But before I had gotten the vehicle inspected, my sister and I, we had um, asked for an um, extension. The extension was for the, um, the 20th of January, but they came and got the vehicle on the 17th. And um, Mr. Hampton told me that I had an illegal inspection stuff on my vehicle. And I told him I don't see how that is possible because with all my vehicles, I had never used an illegal inspection stuff. So I didn't know how that was possible. What had happened, someone had gone, when they came to take my vehicle, they actually stole my vehicle. They broke into my vehicle. They changed the number on the inspection stuff so that it would not match the VIN number of my vehicle. And then it told me that it was illegal. I had to go back to Pep Boys where I had gotten the car inspected, get a copy of the report saying that this was a valid inspection sticker. Um, they refused to give me, they still refused to give me the car. I had to go to the mayor's office um, with an interview with Mr. Hansen and his supervisor. Um, they found out that the car was told illegally and um, it was given back to me that same day. Um, but in the process of them breaking into my vehicle, changing the inspection sticker, they damaged the vehicle, they damaged the, um, um, the property, and no one wanted to um, compensate me for any of the damages. They didn't want to compensate me for any undue stress and the rights of mine that had been violated. I was told that the city attorney would contact me. He or she never did. Um, in the letter from the mayor's office, it says that this is um, Victoria Benjamin Esquire, who is the liaison to him and Smell, will contact me. She did contact me. Um, she said she was going to do an investigation. Um, I never heard from her concerning the investigation. The um, vehicle is still damaged. Um, I talked to Cyber, a Cyber Toy. Um, they said that their drivers do not go around um, damaging people's vehicles, that they were not going to pay for um, any type of damage. I received a letter from them. I got a letter from the mayor's office that's supposed to be a, a, a letter of a resolution. I don't know whether it's a letter of resolution or not. I have the um, um, confirmation of extension, whereas they gave an extension until the 20th, but they came and got the vehicle on the 17th. The police officer told me that they could come and get the car after the 20th, but they cannot come and put the car um, earlier. Um, which was on the 17th. Um, I contacted my city council person, Mrs. Um, um, Trumbull, who gave me some assistance, but not very much. She sent um, Cyber Coin back out to lift the damages. This um, There's a lady back there, Jennifer Wicker. No, 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 Okay, because this has been an ongoing um, thing. Right, I'm trying to get some type of uh, resolution. You need to out in Jennifer's person. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry that all of that happened. Oh, well, you know, that's what the mayor office said. That's what Cyber Cohen said. But I'm still in the situation of trying to get some type of um, assistance, some type of um, um, restitution for, you know, what I have gone through. in. I still feel like, you know, my rights, you know, um, have been violated. So I'm, you know, that's why, that's why I'm appealing to this um, chamber and asking that, you know, that this chamber will do um, the correct thing to correct the injustice that I feel has been done, you know, uh, to me. And Jennifer will help you. And then Jennifer will get back to us and let us know what happens. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker is Richard Hammond. The next speaker is Charles T. Woodward. Uh, just, just for the record, the chicken you are here, correct? Correct. All right, the four chickens stand up. In the house. Okay, thank you very much. I'm not going to ask you to get chickens, that's a leading question. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Todd Woodson, and I'm here to speak for the Oregon Hill Neighborhood Association. I've served as treasurer for the last 11 years. 
We have serious concerns on an SUP proposal pending on the Victory Road building on South Cherry Street. We feel there has been serious flaws committed and don't think that fair or due process has been served to our residents. A little background on the SUP. The Victory Road current parcel assessment of $270,000 has risen 236% in the last 10 years. We believe this assessment is correct and fair for a building in this condition. The parcel was bought at auction for $660,000 of the development. A message was sent to the developer from Ona before closing on the property, outlining inherent problems developing the building. I've got a copy of that to give you all. Consequently, hardship cannot be used to justify the aggressive density requested with off-street parking limited to only eight questionable spaces. The proposal is for 29 bedrooms, which would require somewhere between 30 and 45 parking spaces. Parking is already a hardship due to our proximity to VCU. This development is two, two and a half blocks from the Mammoth VCU Recreation Center. The city has received 114 letters of opposition and no letters in favor. A main concern is that in early October, neighborhood representatives met with Mr. Jewell, the developer, and Mark Baker of Baker Development Resources, who is representing the developer on this SUP. No concessions were made and the meeting was a disappointment. On October 22nd, the SUP ordinance was introduced to council. Sometime between then and October 30th, Councilman Jewell solicited help in securing campaign funds from Mr. Baker, and an email was sent to other developers by Mr. Baker, as well as to a networking group maintained by Mr. Baker. I mean no disrespect to Mr. Jewell, and I'm not, I'm not an attorney yet, so I can't say if this is illegal. I will say that the hundreds of residents facing hardship from this SUP find the appearance of impropriety of major concern. I have also included the solicitation from Mr. Baker in your package. And I just would like to read a, a couple of sentences from Mark Baker in soliciting funds. Marty Jewell recently approached me to help generate support in the development community. I found Marty very reasonable in my dealings with him on special land use issues, uh, land use approvals at council level, so I'm inclined to help. Marty needs your financial support to win re-election on November 6th to continue his advocacy for improved business environment. Uh, I've got three pieces of thank you. I've got three pieces of uh, information to give you. One is the letter uh, that was sent to the developer before he closed on the property from the owner president. The other is the letter from Mark Baker, and the other is a survey. We got uh, a survey done, the V dot standard width of a residential street with parking on both sides, 28 feet. Your time is up. Thank you. Uh, the 400 block is not wide enough. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Madam President. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson, before you leave, yes. uh, the meeting that you mentioned that I helped set up uh, between Oregon Hill Neighborhood Association, uh, the owner and his consultant, did they not say that they were uh, um, not talking 29 units, but in fact 18 units. There are 29 bedrooms, sir. 18 units, 29 bedrooms is what I said. Uh, I thought you said 29 units. No, sir. It's, 20, it's 18 units, 29 bedrooms. And you are here representing the association? That's correct, sir. sir. And we would like to postpone this until after the first of the year. The hearing of the council. Uh, we'll see who you're representing. Thank you. 